This is a lecture video going over how to read and write notes on the music staff. This is actually very easy, and people that understand this already, you can sort of turn this up at double speed or one and a half times and just go through it quickly. But the music staff has one, two, three, four, five lines, and one, two, three, four spaces. And it's just a vertical graph. The higher up you go and you put notes on there, the higher the sound. The further down you go, the lower the sound. And we write notes. I'm just going to go up here. There's different kinds, but the most basic one looks kind of like a squished golf ball. It's kind of like an oval sitting up on its side right there. And that's called a whole note. If you add a stem to it, it's called a half note. If you fill in the note head with a stem, it's called a quarter note. If you do that and you add a flag to it, it's called an eighth note. And those designate how long things take to play, time values. But where it sits on your one, two, three, four, five lines or one, two, three, four spaces determines what note it is. So, for instance, these are in this upper part on the first space, but I could write a note on the line, and that would be one note lower than the one in the space. And I could go up to the next line, and that would be one note or note name higher than this one. And I could go to here, and that would be one note name higher than this one. It's just linear like that. Every space and every line is just the next note name. Now, I'm just going to do this all with whole notes because they're the quickest things to write. But when we're interested in duration, we'll put stems and fill in notes and flags and stuff. The first thing we need to have to help us know what an actual absolute pitch is, is something called a clef. It's a symbol. You've seen these a lot looks like that. This is called a treble clef. It's also sometimes called the G clef because it tells us where the note G is. See how this wraps around the second line right there like that to start right there. If a note with this symbol on it is on this second line, first line, second line, then it is the G. It's the G above middle C, which is the middle C in the piano. And then if we know this, then the note below it will go backwards through the alphabet, let's go to the space below it, is an F. So it's called a G clef, and if we go up, it's an A, and so on. Treble clef indicates that this is a G, that it sounds like this, and it's primarily for instruments and voices that sing in the upper range of pitches. There is another clef called the bass clef, which we'll learn more about in the weeks to come. It looks like this, it has two dots right there, and it's primarily telling us where the lower notes are. So if you play a low instrument, or if you're a pianist, you'll see them in tandem together, where generally that's for the right hand, and generally that's for the left hand, which will be lower on the keyboard. Okay? And that's the basics of it right there. So we need a clef. Think of this like a where are you or you are here symbol on a map. Walk into a mall, you look at the directory, it says you are here. And what that's actually saying is, that's a G right there, which means that will be an A, that will be a B, and so on. Now, if we go all the way up or all the way down, make sure we don't go off camera screen right here, like that, we are able to go higher. The way that that works is we add another line. And we don't draw the whole line, we just draw enough for the note. 
It's called a ledger line. And it just extends the staff so you can keep going. So let's count G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then we'll go to A again and we keep going up. B and so on. And we can go down. This would be G, F, E, D. And then we do an extension or a ledger line right there and that would be a C like that. That's the basics. Now, um, what we'll do in training video to show you how to do practice this is to deconstruct it down to small amounts. I'll give you a couple mnemonics. If you only write the notes in the spaces here, this is an F, this is an A, this is a C, and this is an E, and uh, it spells face. And that's the first mnemonic that we're going to learn. Uh, when we have little kids and we teach them this, we say, grab your hand out there and say, these are the five lines. And you go, face, the space. These are the spaces. And always have a good day. Because the note on top is a G. And the note below is a D. So, good day. So that's a mnemonic that you can use to remember these things. There's ones for the lines too. E, G, B, D, F, every good boy does fine or deserves fudge or something like that. Um, even girls be dirty. I don't know, anyhow. Okay, so there you go. Uh, you'll also notice that if we skip every other line or every other space, that we spell our triads. So F, A, C, or a, C, E, or if we're on the lines, remember this note is G, G, B, D, right? And that also converts to the piano as well. If you know that this is your F, then you go F, A, C, like that right there, which relates to triads. And that's basically it. Don't worry about bass clef for now. Don't worry about funny things like sharps or flats, yet we just need you to get good at reading these notes. And we have some worksheets um, in your packet that will help you do that by focusing on just a few notes at a time. So that's pitches on the staff.